On June the 1st, Ukraine's security service, the SBU, used a flotilla of small, cheap drones to attack a Russian airbase, and they caused $7 billion of damage to aircraft, many of them strategic cruise missile carriers. Yeah, President Zelensky said they used 117 drones in the operation, and it took out a third of Russia's nuclear bomb force. Wow, so it's <laughs> sizable. Yeah. Um, so this was called Operation Spiderweb, and it showed how small, cheap drones can be smuggled into a country and used against expensive, really expensive mm. military hardware. And it's really brought home uh, to how nations like the US, UK, any country really, aren't ready to defend against a similar kind of attack. Yeah, and it's also really brought home just how unprepared we are. And I asked Robert Bunker about this. He's from a US military consultancy firm called CO Futures. Here's what he had to say. This goes well beyond even being a major vulnerability gap. In war, conflict, terrorism, advanced disruptive technologies are now being increasingly fielded, such as drones, AI, swarming, directed energy, that are far more sophisticated and deadly than traditional military-grade systems. The Ukrainians spent roughly $200,000 on drones' explosives to destroy $6 to $8 billion in Russian strategic bombers. We are in a postmodern paradigm shift in warfighting. Just look at the survival rate of main battle tanks and infantry personnel on the front lines in that conflict, both sides being collectively besieged by over 100,000 pinpoint drone FPV and aerial bombardment attacks per month. The dike can't be plugged. It's literally crumbling in front of us and will soon burst. The dike can't be plugged and it will soon burst. Gosh, right? yeah. Yeah. And that, that figure, $200,000 on drones only, and it took out 6 to $8 billion Incredible of hardware. Incredible scale of magnitude yeah, there. Yeah. Um, the journalist David Hambling has been reporting on this for us about what nations can do to protect themselves from similar attacks. And he found that there are three approaches. There's the physical, the electronic and the kinetic Okay, so the physical one is a, n- a net, generally, yeah, right? Yeah, a net or a barrier. Yeah. Um, aircraft shelters are incredibly expensive to build. There are cheaper anti-drone nets that you could do instead, but those are actually quite easy to take out. Now, what about jamming them? That's what I always think of. Yeah, so on the front lines, both Russia and Ukraine are using electronic jamming tools to, to break radio links between drones and their operators. Um, and that works to some extent in a battlefield situation. But because jammers typically operate at short range, an airbase would need to be blanketed in them. Mm. And that means you'd have problems about jamming your own signals as right, well. Right, right. And any, anyway, the SBU said that their drone, the drones they used were, they anticipated jamming mm. and they had this AI backup system so that if they were jammed, then they could just automatically get, get to their destination. Um, so they're effectively immune mm. to jamming. They're autonomous. Yeah. OK, so then you could try and shoot down drones. Right. But that's not easy. It's really hard to target them. Uh, you'd have to have lots of weapon systems all over your airbase, have them crewed constantly. So again, that becomes a very expensive burden. Yeah. So you can see why he says it's a paradigm yeah. shift in warfare. Um, and I asked that guy, Robert Bunker, about the threat potential. And here he is again on that. The risk potentials of such attacks right now are are actually 100%. You simply need a group, extremist, terrorist, state proxy, foreign special forces with the intent and capability, which is a very low bar to overcome, to do so. We are wide open in this regard. Still, this has not taken place, so either the intent has not existed, or if the intent exists, either the would-be attacker is either incompetent and can't achieve the capability to engage in such an attack, or plots to engage in such attacks have been discovered and interdicted. We know that in the U.S., a number of weaponized drone plots have been broken up in the past, but no disclosures have been made if they were directed at air bases. So, you know, it's in his best interest in a way to say there's a 100% possibility of of an attack. Um, You know, he runs a consultancy firm. Yeah. So, yeah, it's in his business to to drum it up. Mm. But it also does seem true that there is this huge threat that we have not yet figured out at all how to deal with. I mean, it, it's barely comparable, but it reminded me back... Do you remember in 2018 when Gatwick Airport was closed down because right. there were drone sightings? Yeah. And that really brought home then how little we can do when there's a drone flying yeah, around. Yeah. And that was just in terms of disrupting air traffic. Just hobbyists yeah. mucking around. But yeah, what it could have much Huge worse potential. consequences.